Back in Sean Palmer, we're going to the second level, Aspen Snowmass. The board that we unlocked at 8 goals has buffed the stats of our starting board. However, any board we unlock, I'll show off for the next level. Picking Aspen, we'll see that the goals follow the same format as in Donner Ski Ranch. Three score-based goals, one speedrun, one to find the hidden logos, one to find the secret sponsor, and three unique ones. Aspen's are Demolish the Coffee Stands, Bonk the Gondola, and Show the Yuppies, the bottom of our board. There's a little bit of voice acting in this game, usually in the form of workers you pass who will tell you off for going too fast or using the park when it's not open, but the yuppies are special and they get their own voice acting. When you start a new level, the soundtrack resets, and since it only takes me four or five times max going down the level to collect everything, I'll move the soundtrack forward every other level so it'll play through all 11 songs. I didn't mention it in the first episode, but this game's soundtrack is a prime example of early 2000s industrial rock, featuring bands like Static X, Spineshank, Power Man 5000. There are only 11 songs in the game, and for the most part, they're in that genre with two big exceptions. A Pantera song that's just straight up metal, and perhaps my favorite song in the game, The Evil Powers of Rock and Roll by Super Suckers, which is just a fun rock song. None of the songs in this game became as widespread or remembered as some of these songs in the Tony Hawk series, like Superman, but they're not bad and they're alright to ride to. As you can see, Aspen is a little more grounded in reality than Donner Ski Ranch is, with not as many big air opportunities, aside from the cliff at the beginning, but there's more houses, more kickers, and it seems like a ski lift built more for regular people and less for video game characters who can do double front flips off of every jump. In the first episode, I may have given spinning too little credit. You've seen me land sloppy tricks and sick tricks, but only if you add some spins can you get a perfect modifier, which increases even more the amount of points you get from a trick. Of course, if you land sideways, you're going to fall down and not get any points, so using spins is something that I'm still a little cautious against. Also, it's tough to get a perfect modifier because you basically have to land exactly straight. It's easier on half pipes, and I keep attempting to show it off in the video, and eventually I do land something perfect after too many tries. At the bottom of the Aspen snow mass is a ski lodge and other various buildings. There's not all that many tricking opportunities here, but there are some good gaps involving grinding or just jumping from building to building. Note that I collected the Aspen logos on my trip down, and I'll also collect the secret sponsor before this run is over. I'm trying to cut down on the length of the videos and keep them more fast-paced, and also cut the amount of times I have to go back down the course for just one or two goals. So I hope future videos will become more efficient without losing any experience of seeing the game. The hidden sponsor is in plain sight, it's just perched on a telephone wire and we have to find a way up there. So to do that, go to the house, use the ramp to jump up to the wire, make sure to hold your balance and not fall off, and you'll collect the secret sponsor. There's nothing else I can do with the 20 seconds left, so it's time to end the run and go to the results screen and see what we got. At 10 sponsors we get 2 stat points. And at 14 sponsors, we get another two stat points, so it's time to go and really give our character a boost. I put one into Ollie and one into Balance, then after some thinking, I just round him out again. Checking the list of goals, there is the speedrun goal and the three unique goals. I can do two of those in one run, so this is Demolish the Coffee Stands and Bonk the Gondola. Again, one of those goals is to use a certain move in a certain location. In this case, it's Bonk the Gondola. Bonk is when you land on an object and immediately bounce off of it. In this case, when you're falling, push any direction and the X button, and your character is just bounce off and you'll see Bonk at the bottom in your combo. Note that you can't just Bonk on the snow. It has to be on an object, either on a tree, on a rail, someone's house, someone's front porch, 
container. So here I will jump, holding left and hitting X, and I will bounce off the gondola. Really, you only need to hit X once and the character will know to bonk off the object, but I like to just mash it in case. There's quite a few goals in the game that require you to bonk, so you should really know how to do so. When I picked this game up a couple weeks ago, I couldn't figure out how to bonk, so all of the goals that I had left, like the last ones that I completed, were those. And it was because I didn't understand one of the game mechanics. So if you're playing along, or later, choose to play this game because of the LP, learn to bonk. Once you do, it'll save you a lot of hassle, and it's just a fun word to say. This whole time, I've been smashing coffee stands by trucking right through them. At the start of the level, you'll need to take the left path to get one, but after that, they're pretty much just on the regular path of the level. The only tricky one is the last one. You'll see coming up, you have to take a hard left to the left of the ski lodge, and the coffee stand is really the only thing back there. After playing a little longer, I decided to end the run, since I didn't have enough time to complete the last unique goal. With the 15th sponsor, we unlock the 4th level. We still have a thing or two to do in Aspen though, so we're gonna stay there for the time being. The last unique goal, show the yuppies the bottom of your board, should probably be done on its own, because it takes quite a while to do, and there are points where you can mess up, and then that's another 30 seconds or so of going back and trying it again. There are five yuppies standing around the level, usually by houses, and to show them the bottom of our board, we must jump over them. Most of the yuppies have convenient ramps in front of them to make your life easier, however one of them does not and it's much harder to jump over, and you'll probably take two or three tries your first time. If you haven't gotten familiar with the concepts of a big ollie and a super ollie by this point, you really should. A big ollie is when you hold the jump button then push forward right before you jump. A super ollie is pushing forward twice right before you jump. They'll get you more height than a regular jump, and I finally get a perfect modifier, acting as a 1.5 times modifier for that trick. Despite really not clearing this yuppie, he counts anyway. Also, I've already passed a yuppie, so I need to go back up at the end. I went to the right path at the beginning of the level, where there were two yuppies, but the left path has one. So you'll want to give yourself an extra 30 seconds on the clock or so when you hit the reset point at the end of the level. So the yuppie down here is the hardest to jump over, and forgive me for slowing down and lining it up, because there really isn't a jump in front of her. You have to at least big ollie over her. And again, if this is too tough, go further in the game, get your ollie stat up more, then come back and try again. If you miss, it's about 40 seconds to get back to her, so you really only have two shots at getting her. If you miss twice, you might as well reset. Due to her position in the level, she would at least be the third yuppie you jump over if you go to the left at the beginning and get this one, because why not get the yuppie at the house after the uh, middle reset point on the way down? He's pretty easy to get. Heading towards the first house, another stairs ramp lets us clear him with ease and finish another challenge. We unlock our third board, which again buffs the stats of the first two boards, but I'll be using the third board for the third level. For the speedrun, we have to reach the bottom with more than a minute 25 left while scoring over 30,000 points. Again, if you have a good understanding of jumping, doing a flip, doing a trick, maybe even doing a special trick, you should get quite a bit of points on the first jump. Go to the right at the start of the level, and in general, Aspen is curved in a very loose S formation. So make sure to stay in a straight line, and you should have the fastest route. Coming up to the middle of the level, there's not a lot of places for big air opportunities. There's some places for small point opportunities, but again, make sure not to spend too much time not going forward. You can get some air here, or you can get more air by tricking off the house, 
That'll also get you a gap that'll add a multiplier to your combo. We don't want to go up the house to the right and grind the lines we've been grinding. In this case, we do want to swerve around to the left. It might look longer, but it sets up this bonking shortcut. You have to bonk the object there and it'll bounce you up here, cutting an entire C-shaped area of the level. You can also use that to line yourself up and jump the uppie at the end, but I find if I do that, I have too much speed to really make a good enough jump to get the uppie. With this, we are done with Aspen Snowmass, and it's time to put it in my rear view mirror. But first, with 18 sponsors comes two more stat points. I decide to just put them both in Ollie since I'm not having much of a problem with anything, and it's time to save again. Join me next episode when I cover the third level, Kirkwood. Until then, see ya.